Welcome into this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where today we're going to talk about making yourself look better using the liquify tool. And this is something you can use for, on photos of yourself. It's something you can use uh, for fashion shoots and beauty shoots and literally any kind of photography job. The liquify tool and the liquify feature in Photoshop is so powerful. And in fact, it's probably kind of often overused by different photographers depending on what your philosophical uh, views are on this kind of thing. I'm the kind of guy I tend to not, I don't really like to go overboard with liquify, but disclaimer for the, for the purposes of this tutorial, we are going to go overboard with it and we're going to make some crazy transformations with liquify and we're going to have some fun with it. Um, but just as a general rule, it's not something I like to use to do like crazy body shifting, all kinds of stuff, but you can do a lot with liquify. Before I jump into, the, uh, into the, the meat of the tutorial, I'm selling a full course on how to retouch images over on tutvid.com. There's a link that just appeared in the video up in the top corner. Uh, you can check it out. You can pick it up. It helps support the site and help me create more and more of these tutorials. And hey, I'll love you all the more if you go pick it up. Let's talk about Liquify. All right, so the first thing and one of the uh, primary things that I'll use Liquify for is as I right click and convert this layer to a smart object is increasing lip and eye size. It makes it very, very easy. This image is quite huge. Actually, it's a raw 16 bit image uh, out of my digital camera. Uh, I'll go filter Liquify. All right, so here's the Liquify dialog box. A few things to go over in the Liquify dialog box. First and foremost, if you hold down the Alt or Option key at any point, the Cancel button converts to a Reset button, which will immediately undo all of your changes. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. We're not going to go over loading and saving meshes, but when you save a mesh, oh, well, here we go. I'm going over it. What am I doing? When you save a mesh, you basically save all of the liquefied transforms that you made and you can load a mesh for some reason. If you have multiple of the same image or something and you want to quickly uh, set up your liquefy a certain way, uh, you can load it in. Honestly, I never use meshes. I just never do. There is, however, actually a workaround, as you will see here. And let me just show this to you. This is a little glitch in Photoshop. Let's just, man, I don't know what I'm doing here. We're just going to make her face crazy. I'm going to hit OK. Because this is a 16-bit image uh, in Photoshop CC 2015, I believe. This is where the glitch is. Still hasn't been fixed by Adobe. Um, we get this crazy light box around here. One of the ways to go around it is to create your liquify change, save it as a, a mesh, load it as a mesh and apply it and I believe then it won't happen. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to go image mode and just convert it to an 8-bit image. Um, a lot of retouchers though don't like to work in 8-bit because it's just the, 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 the level of quality and depth of the image does uh, suffer a bit when you're doing all kinds of uh, retouching and whatnot. Totally understand it. I'm going to go filter liquify again and now all of our liquify changes will uh, stand because it's an 8-bit image, not 16-bit, so we don't have to worry about the glitch. We have the smudge tool, and the smudge tool, as you saw, just like makes just crazy stuff happen. We're going to undo all of that. Uh, by the way, undo Command or Control Z for the first undo, and then Command, Option, or Control, Alt, Z for undos beyond that. Uh, we have some other brushing tools here. We're not going to mess with these. The tools we're going to use are the smudge tool and the bloat tool. Sometimes you're going to use the pucker tool as well, um, but we're going to stick with kind of these few tools, and we're also going to use the masking tools um, to lock in portions of the image. For this here, let's just take care of this. Um, I'm going to use the bloat tool. You can see my tool options. The size is huge. I typically do not use the slider to resize my brush. I use my side to side bracket keys. Well, not side to side, they're my square bracket keys, but you know, hitting the, the right bracket makes my brush bigger, and the left bracket makes my brush smaller. So I'm going to make the brush about the size of her eye. Uh, the density of the brush at 50, uh, that's great. It's just going to, you know, make sure we really bloat the eye as long as we press uh, down with our mouse. Now, obviously, we just want to give it like a little tap. Each eye, just one little tap. And then the lips also, one little tap. Maybe the edges as well, one little tap. Boom, boom. Oop, that makes your lips a little bit too big. Um, in her case, we may actually want to make the edges of the lips a little bit smaller. All right, because by making the edges a little bit smaller, it's going to kind of accentuate the, the front and middle and make them appear a little bit bigger, but still obviously work within the context of the rest of her face. Hit OK. And by the way, pro tip when you're using Liquify, you know you've done a pretty good job with Liquify when you finish with Liquify and you're not sure you've even made a change. Because this is a smart filter, I can hit the eyeball and shut my changes off, turn them back on. Very subtle. Very subtle. Beautiful. Love it. That's the way I like to use Liquify. Let's take a look here at another, a little bit more extreme usage of Liquify. We've got this girl here, beautiful girl. We're going to cause her to lose weight. I'm not going to get into the whole 
fat models versus skinny models and all the other political correct uh, bull crap that's circulating out there. Um, just know I think it's bad on, on every account to do super, super extreme stuff, but I also don't really care. I mean it's – you know, whatever. Um, let's talk about the liquify tool. I've got her as a smart object um, and we're going to cause her to lose a bit of weight here. What I want to do is first and foremost, I'm just going to duplicate this image. So I'm going to hit Commander Control J, and with the image on top, I'm going to hit Commander Control uh, Command or Control T. Hold on my Alt or Option key and just squeeze her inward just a little bit, very very subtle. Go ahead and hit the check button or the check icon to make that okay. And then what we would do at this point is like you know add a, a mask to this image. And let me make sure I don't have shape dynamics turned on. I don't. And my brush is set to paint with black. My hardness should be at zero. And what I'm going to do is just blend this edge in by clicking once up here and then hold down my shift key and clicking once down there. Great. Do the same thing on this side. Click once. Hold down my shift key. Click once. Boom. Blended together. Beautiful. All right. Now with this image, I'm going to apply the liquify uh, filter. So I'm going to do a filter liquify. And of course, up pops the liquify dialog box. Now, some of the stuff that we didn't really go through before when we were just adjusting the eyes and the lips of the girl uh, were stuff like the mask. And the mask allows you to, whatever area you paint over, you essentially lock that part of the image in. So let's just say we knew, for instance, we wanted to push her body back to like there, okay? And then on this side, we wanted to push her body back to something like that, okay? What we could do is we could do that and then we could grab the smudge tool and we could just push it all the way in to that, you know, just, just where we have protected, right? And just ignore the junk that runs off because we didn't really finish the mask. And if I paint this or if I just hit the mask options, hit the, the none button, it gets rid of that. You can see that we've pushed her body all the way back. Now the edge is really sharp and harsh and really doesn't look that great. But just know that you have the, the opportunity and the possibility of doing that. It can be really, really helpful um, if you have maybe some sort of pattern or uh, maybe the model is not over a solid color background and there's some kind of edge of a window or a, a fence or a little uh, a railing or something. You can lock that in and you can liquefy away from that and the railing is never going to be touched. How many Photoshop fails have you seen where it's somebody and they obviously have not had this feature at their disposal and they've done a lot of destruction. Let's use the smudge tool here. Actually, I'm going to use the, the, the pucker tool. I'm going to make her face just a touch smaller, right? Just going to kind of naturally slim her face. A couple gentle clicks. Uh, maybe I'll do the same here up with her elbow, the backside of her arm, her hand here. Notice that I'm using the brush very large. I'm just using my um, uh, my square bracket keys, making the brush larger and smaller, as we talked about before. And uh, I'm just gonna make her arm a little bit smaller, right? Just make things slender. Make the bracelets appear a little bit smaller. Just generally slimming. And then with the smudge tool, what we're gonna do is make that pretty large. And we're gonna begin by pushing. Let's actually work here with the back side. Let's push in uh, the back of her body. Try to establish the hourglass uh, shape here. All right, so we're going to push the derriere in, which then is going to mean that the whole leg needs to be pushed in a little bit. We don't want the leg to be perfectly straight because that, that definitely does not look natural. Let me get close to the edge. All right, I'm going to push it out just a little bit. Make this brush a little bit larger, and let's just gently push the booty out a little bit. There we go. All right, let's go with the inner thigh because the inner thighs have too much meat on them. There is something you will never hear in the world of high fashion. Thighs having too much meat on them. That's got to be like blasphemy. All right, let's slide the other thighs in a little bit. I'm going to keep a small bump here in the bottom of the thigh. Um, just when you work out your hamstrings, that's typically uh, the part of your leg that's going to get a little bit bigger. And I think it actually kind of works. So there's just going to be a slight bump there. Um, all right, let's move that side of her chest in. Let's move that side of her body in. And then just maybe bump her hip a little bit down here. We don't want too much of the hourglass shape on this side of her body. I don't think it's going to necessarily look... Uh, incredibly natural and we're doing a lot of slimming as it is. One of the things I am taking care of, I want to just make sure that my lines are straight however. I don't want something to look, you know, like it'll just look very obviously liquefied I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to move this whole hip in. Let's move this leg back a little bit. Let's shrink the size of the leg down. I know it looks kind of crazy but remember we're looking at this having just looked at a much wider version of her. So we, we're working on this and trying to make it look as natural as possible uh, knowing that we just had a, a much, much wider version of her. Now I am going to zoom in because her bathing suit is not sitting on her uh, waist or her hip I should say the way it should be. So I'm going to zoom in, hold my spacebar key and just use the hand tool. 
move over to where I need to be. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and let's just bump this up and move it kind of where it needs to be so it sits on her hip a little bit more smoothly. She's going to kind of draw the eye away from this because this definitely should, I know it looks like it's a sharp indent, but it definitely should be that way coming down off of her hip because of the angle. Uh, I think that's right. All right. That looks pretty good. We can generally go over it with the, the pucker tool and maybe make the pucker tool much, much larger and just kind of shrink the legs in a little bit. Um, again, we want to just watch when we're doing this that we we don't want to make her devoid of all shapes. So I'm going to go to the bloat tool here, maybe push the back side of that thigh out a little bit. It's always good to have a little shape, you know. Uh, and maybe I'll push this out just a little tiny bit. I don't, again, I don't want it to look like the liquify tool has been out and used, so I'm just trying to, if I give her a little bit more of an hourglass look, it's kind of naturally kind of make it pop on that side, because her hips should sort of be popping that way, there's just a little, a little bit needs to be adjusted there, a little bit needs to be adjusted there, cool, all right, so let's go ahead and hit the OK uh, button, and you can see here, because it's a smart object, I can shut the liquify off. There was before, and there's after. So we can take her from what would be considered a plus-sized model, a normal girl, to, you know, sort of fashion, uh, fashion runway uh, design skinny relatively quickly in liquify and liquify is going to allow us to do it and get a really really realistic look now obviously just cleaning up the edges and being careful with your edges that's all up to you maybe i would go in and just fix that in fact i can do that by double clicking the word liquify it can bring me back into liquify i can make my brush a little smaller just push that in just a little little tiny bit don't want to push it in too much maybe pop out the uh the hip there a little bit you can play with the angles and everything uh, you know, stinking all day long if you really go after it. Make the elbow just a little bit smaller there. Cool. All right, hit OK. It's going to bring us back out. And again, I know, like I said earlier, the general rule with Liquify that I follow is I don't like to be able to see any difference. Obviously, in this case, you can see drastic difference. Um, but it looks pretty cool. And we've taken a girl who was a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger, and obviously, we've made her much, much, much smaller. So, that's liquify in Photoshop. I have another example here, and this would just be an example where um, you know you really want to lock in like these vertical beams of the window if you're going to go ahead and liquify and change anything. Um, you know, but one of the one of the things actually that can be really useful here, and I'll just go uh, filter liquify just to show you really really quickly. One of the things that can be really super useful in liquify, especially with uh, the the smudge tool up here, is if there's something like. Um, I don't know. There's nothing really wrong with her skin, but maybe like there's a bump in her hair that needs to go. You can just go in and push and adjust the hair any which way. Maybe you need to make the hair just a little tiny bit bigger, right? You can always do that. We can mix it with the uh, with the bloat tool and just kind of poof out the hair a little bit. See, here's a perfect example of where the vertical lines start to really get all all wackified. So we'll go over this first. We'll lock in this vertical beam. We don't want to touch that. All right. We'll go with the bloat tool here, and we'll just bloat the hair out just a little bit. All right, something like that. Maybe to compensate, we'll make her head or her face a teensy bit smaller. All right, we can go ahead and hit OK. And uh, we'll be able to see there's before, there's after. So the verticalness of the beam has not been compromised, and we've just given the hair a little pop and the face a little drop. And uh, we've gone in and just performed a little liquify change uh, that's kind of boosted the image a little bit. Uh, that, that can be used for all kinds of things here. You know, if we wanted to, like, there's that little bump in the top of her head, we could just kind of push that down a little bit, adjust things. You know, her shoulder, there's a little, a little a bump here where probably the edge of her collarbone meets the shoulder, either that or something underneath the shirt is pushing it up. You know, bam, hit it with the liquify, press it right down. No big deal. So liquify in Photoshop, immensely powerful and an amazingly fun tool to use. Um, and you can use it so many different ways. But for liquify in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Look, I'm no racist, but I think we both know that finding great Photoshop tutorials online is getting harder and harder every day. So why don't you join me? Crush that like button and help promote this tutorial, a truly great Photoshop tutorial. If I say so myself, that is. Of course, you can subscribe to my channel and you'll never miss another video in the future either. I'm really coming across as conceited, aren't I? I'm the most humble person I know, really. Anyway, you can go over to touchfit.com and you can sign up for my newsletter as well. I'll send you 30 free time-saving tips in Photoshop. Never any spam. Always good newsletters. Um, 
And also, social media. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. And that's it. Learn what the real me is like, not this conceited douche nozzle version of me.